Bonjour à vous, et bienvenue pour cette... Good afternoon, welcome to this press conference on the half yearly accounts for the first half of 2022. Welcome to all those who are here and those who are connected online. We're going to present the results. First of all, a few highlights. The highlights for the first half is a record-breaking order in intake with the export Rafales, and especially those of the UAE, AT, Greece for six additional aircraft, and a strong recovery of Falcon orders with 41 Falcon ordered this first half. At the same time, the new difficulty is the difficulty because of the crisis you have uh, gone through. This creates a certain complexity in the supply chain and a shortage of workforce that we can see in our company and in all the companies that contribute to the um, building of our aircraft. The context, you know about the context, it's a difficult context between Russia and Ukraine with the war in Russia, a global health crisis that is still Persisting, although we thought that the COVID was behind us, actually at the beginning of this year, in January, we were still hit. We went back to working from home. Some countries closed their borders, like China, and there was a re-emergence of the virus, and it still is the case now. The presidential elections in France, with the re-election of President Macron, the legislatives that didn't give any majority to any party, and so a new formula in the Fifth Republic in terms of our government. These crises created high inflation that you can see today, and this might remain at this very high level. And so we're beginning to see signs of concerns about growth. And our supply chain is under pressure. It has started again with our Rafale and Falcon successes, but also with the recovery of Airbus. So the ramp up is once again the topic. And after two years of whatever might happen in France, this going back to work, this intensive going back to work is difficult, especially since we have shortages in terms of our resources. And energy is also going to weigh on this issue in terms of our supply chain and socially also because of inflation. So therefore, we have a very complex environment. As for the Ukraine crisis, sanctions have been decided by the EU and by the United States and by others too, other countries. So we complied with these sanctions and we implemented in Dassault and for our subcontractors the whole issue related to these sanctions. So this means freezing all our plants in Russia. We had an office in Moscow in the civil area for our Falcons. We had a subsidiary of Dassault Falcon Services to support our Falcon aircraft locally, Falcons that are operating in Russia, therefore, and we stopped and ceased all our commercial activities, our sales of aircraft to that country. There are some counter sanctions also in certain areas that have affected us and our supply chain. Now, the risks of our supply chain, the crisis in 2020 because of the COVID, this uh, continued until 2021, the crisis in Russia and Ukraine and a new supply chain that had to be installed, strong risks in our electronic components because of uh, the COVID crisis. And if there was an extension of uh, the crisis in other areas in the globe, we all have trouble finding electronic components. And this is a major concern. Of course, we've taken a certain number of measures. And as you might have seen last week, week, the president launched an increase the manufacturing and development capacity of ST microelectronics with the Franco-Italian partnership. So the outlooks are favorable for the company. When we look at the orders, historically, they're quite strong. So we'll have to increase our pace, ramp up. And the supply chain is still concerning us. We are keeping a close eye on it thanks to the control towers that we have set up at Dassault and at the GFAS. 
As for our programs, uh, the Rafael and uh, other contracts were signed last year, but they were implemented in April this year. So this will ensure workload until 2031 for our factories. Greece has ordered six more Rafales. Indonesia has signed two contracts, 36 aircraft. They are still not uh, in force, so we're waiting for this enforcement this year. And we are executing and delivering seven export Rafales. And the guidance for the year is to deliver 13 Rafale in 2022. We have a lot of uh, prospects with whom we are discussing, and these are additional promising contracts for the years to come. Now we're going to continue the development of work in France on our F4 standard, standard which, which is the armed forces standard for the UAE and for France, the launch of the productivity works to allow a um, batch five contract for 2023 around 42 aircraft. We're thinking with France about a war economy because uh, the president talked about the war economy. We are talking about this with the Ministry of Armed Forces to see what that would mean for us industrialists on the whole and on a case per case basis. So this is generic work that we are beginning to do. and. We will see this in the future French military program law that was announced last week by the president. So military support, as you've seen in the film, and before talking about the support for the Mirage 2000, we are delivering the retrofits of Mirage 2000D. The Mirage 2000D will keep flying together with the Rafale aircraft with the air, air and air ground improvements. Ravel for Rafale or ATL2 for Ocean and Balzac contract for the Mirage 2000D, but also for the other two Mirage 2000 that are still flying and that will still fly in the coming years. For the export support for our fleets and all the service platforms that we are setting up to improve the support and be as close as possible to our clients for all the Rafales that were delivered to four countries, Egypt, Qatar, India, and Greece. Our training center in Merignac is still running, especially now, to train pilots and Greek mechanics who have bought the Rafale. Future Combat Air System launched in February 2020. Phase one work was completed at the beginning of the year. We are waiting for the contractualization of the phase 1B. After phase 1A, this contract should have been signed at the end of last year or before the end of 2021. And we encountered a few interpretation difficulties of what um, prime contractor means between Dassault and Airbus, and we are still at that point um, right now. Eurodrone, as we saw in the film, the contract was signed by UCAR to Airbus. Airbus is the prime contractor. Dassault would be the subcontractor. Uh, that's not a problem for us. And we are working with Thales on the communication system within this framework and on the control systems of the Eurodrone. Mission, Falcon mission aircraft, four Falcons were ordered by the Southern Korean Republic. These will become surveillance maritime aircraft and the Albatros. This is uh, being developed. There are seven aircraft and Archange, the um, military aircraft with two aircraft in backlog after the Gabriel. Maritime patrol aircraft will deliver the fifth aircraft. There are still more to be delivered, and we're thinking about what could be the future maritime surveillance um, system in France. And we have a Falcon 10X that will give to the DGA as a pre-study in the coming weeks. As for the Falcon, as I was saying at the beginning, sales are picking up 41 deliveries. This figure is slightly higher, actually, because we've canceled the aircraft 
ordered from Russia in accordance with the clients since we won't be able to deliver them. So therefore, a very good number of Falcon orders. The market is very buoyant, especially in Europe and in the United States. We are enriching the range. At the end of the development of the 6X, the program is running well, and I'll have the opportunity to talk about this again. And we're still working with other partners on the development and the use of technologies to reduce the carbon footprint of business jets, and especially the use of the SAF, whether they're green or the future SAFs the alternative ones, the open ones, which are synthetic, so that we can really reduce, therefore, by 50 percent the consumption of the existing aircraft, and we will go beyond with the future aircraft. But of course, the reservation is that these SAFs have to be produced um, according to the right quantity and distributed to the airports. These SAF will cost a little more than kerosene, but we, in-house, DASO and our business jet clients are ready to pay a little more for the use of uh, these aircraft with fuels that will have less carbon in them. So this is the range, Falcon range, Falcon 2000, 4000 nautics to the 10X, you have the 6X at 5,500 nautical miles, 8X, 6,500 nautical miles, 7X slightly under, and the older ones, the Falcon 900, which is still being sold with a range of 4,750 nautical miles. The 6X um, were entered uh, into service, um, as we said, at eBase. Um, uh, business um, show, we had a lot of difficulties because of the COVID crisis, and therefore we're a bit behind schedule. We would rather take more time to make sure that we have the capacity, that we have certification and the capacity to deliver the first aircraft. So the commissioning was put off to mid-2023 when it was actually planned beforehand to the beginning of 2023. The aircraft is finalizing a world tour. It has gone around the world almost. It's gone through Asia, the United States, Europe. It's a world tour that allows us to show the aircraft to our clients on the spot and to test the aircraft in operational conditions with an entire crew on board that can see all the defects because this aircraft is very young. And so we are still ramping up our industrial pace. We have the first aircraft that are being prepared at Little Rock for completion. The cabin, which is a very spacious cabin, you saw a few pictures in the film, was awarded for its design by several organizations. And this is a real success for us. And I hope that our clients really appreciated the flight. Falcon 10X, we are still developing it. Uh, servicing will be at the end of 10, 2025 with a wide range. So this is an ultra long range aircraft. We are developing a new cockpit. We have um, a technology and innovations center. All this was presented. The cabin, we are really insisting on that in terms of comfort because these are long flights because it's an ultra long range aircraft and the design has already received a certain number of awards thanks to the mock-ups mock of size one that we have manufactured and that we're taking around the world so that our future clients might realize how pleasant it is and how efficient this cabin is once this uh, aircraft will be flying. 
the state of the program. We finished the wind tunnel test. We have produced the first parts of the Falcon 10X. The development of the Pearl 10X engine is taking place well with 1,000 test hours. So therefore, we are quite satisfied with this development. But of course, it's a very ambitious plan. And the COVID issues have stopped us from working as we usually do with an integrated platform in St. Cloud before each one goes back to his company to carry out the ad hoc development. So all the difficulties in the 2020, 2021 can be felt on our program, but we're still ambitious and we are sticking to this schedule for the late 2025. The Falcon after sale, Falcon support, we've gone round with our seminars, in-person seminars, and our clients can be informed about the latest in terms of support, the possibility to improve, to optimize the Falcon flights. So a lot of publications that we carry out, but it's easier to explain all that when the clients are there in presence, so all this is very popular. And the fact that we can reorganize these seminars, we can meet our clients again, therefore. We are developing a global SAP for global management. You know we had one in France for the eastern part of the world and another one in the United States in our subsidiary, Dosso Falcon Jet in the United States and the whole of the US, Canada, and Southern America. We've done that to facilitate the life of our clients. Not easy to merge two existing subsidiaries. So we met a few difficulties that bothered our clients, but now we're correcting all that. There are some good things and sometimes there are difficulties and we should be able to talk about that. The service center network, it suffered because of the COVID. And part of this network is suffering because of the Russian crisis, because a certain number of Russian aircraft were supported in Switzerland by our subsidiary TAG maintenance services. So now it is still a difficulty because they haven't gone back to the level of activity that they had in 2019. So from, from this general presentation and as a complement to the film, I will uh, give you some first half results. 127 uh, aircraft have been ordered, 41 Falcons and 86 Rafales. So sharp increase, 21 uh, Falcon or 21 uh, aircraft delivered, seven Rafale and uh, uh, 14 Falcons, so our backlog stands at 247 aircraft, 82 Falcon, 125 exported Rafale and 40 uh, Rafale for France, that is 28 for 42 plus the 12 to replace the um, second hand um, aircraft which were shipped to Greece. This means 16.3 billion euros in terms of order intake. In terms of sales, uh, 3.1 million, uh, that's uh, 1 billion, that's equivalent to last year. And backlog, as consolidated one, is now at 34.1 billion euros with a high percentage thanks to the export of Rafale. It's 65% uh, of our backlog and 25% for the 13%, no, 22% for Rafale France and 13% for Falcons because that's uh, the cumulative uh, backlog. And of course, the Falcons will be uh, delivered faster than the Rafales, but the turnover is slightly different. There's a high percentage of Rafale to export 22% also for France. S uh, 31% for uh, Falcons, which does reflect how buoyant the activity is in the company uh, when it comes to the distribution between export, uh, France, Falcon, and uh, Rafale. So we have the 10X and the 6X, and one is ramping up, so 278 million euros of uh, net sales, uh, increasing uh, compared with uh, last year's H1. So uh, we will have a self-funded R&D, which will be higher than uh, in 2021. Thales has um, also 
closed its uh, books uh, for the first half, will be uh, publishing tomorrow. So 10.8 percent of net sale uh, in a bit 700 and. Uh, 26 million euros, that is 8.8% of, uh, of net sales uh, versus 7.7% 7 .7 in the first half of last year. So uh, it uh, shows uh, our, the contribution to the net sales. So 3.098 uh, billion euros, 2022, to be compared with last year, 200 million euros of uh, operating income, 6.5% of operating margin, increasing by 0.9% uh, compared with the first half of 2021. Financial income is the same. Thales and other equity affiliates, our percentage helps to consolidate 183 million euros. Uh, corporate taxes, Roughly the same as last year. So our net margin of 318 million euros, that is 10.3%, uh, uh, sharply increased uh, comparing with uh, 2021. Our cash is uh, standing at uh, three at 6.3 billion euros thanks to the Rafale exports contracts. Now the guidance remains unchanged. Delivery of 13 Rafales and 35 Falcons in 2022 with a slight decrease in our net sales uh, compared with 2021, as announced earlier this year, in spite of all the difficulties in accessing spare parts and the supply chain shortages that we have reported so far. So that's all for our results. And now we can move on to the Q&A session.